Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh episode of my devlog series about the development of a fantasy town simulation game called Leah. I am finally back from my study break. I've completed all the assignments, the semester is almost finished and it is time for my summer break. It's good news because now I will have more time to work on my game and create better content for you. So let's start. In this episode you will see the development of a level system for the game, territory exploring feature and some transformation of the terrain of my magical world. Also, I made a lot of smaller adjustments and bug fixes, some of which will be included in this video. The first thing I started working on this week was level system. It turned out to be quite easy because it only had three things to do. Collect XP and represent it graphically, save the current state of itself, and unlock items from the shop when a new level is reached. I created a star prefab and added a very similar behavior to it as I did to the coin. Next, I added a new field to a shop item, which defines a level on which an object will be available for purchase. I designed a new level window and even implemented it in the game, but then I tried adding a reward, and that's when I ran into problems. At first, it was just a screen darkening with each time I pressed the OK button. But after that, it got worse because it was going into an infinite loop. Fortunately, I was able to fix it. The solution was simple. I was passing the wrong game event to the event manager, so it turned out to go in circles, invoking itself over and over again. After finishing up the level system, I fixed some bugs, and the first one was that when I destroyed a house, the people who lived there were not removed from the places where they worked. The next quick fix I made was a window to show that a player doesn't have enough currency to buy something. I added an important feature that was still missing at this time, despite the fact that the system connected to it was already done. I am talking about a skip button for building. Previously, the tag had shown only the time left for the building to be finished, but now you don't have to wait. After finishing these smaller fixes, I began working on a new feature opening new territories. I have already thought how I want to implement territories, so it was easy for me to dive in. But I struggled a lot with deciding what UI I wanted to see and what animations I had to implement. I sometimes have these moments when all I think about is how my UI elements are inconsistent with each other. They seem not to be fitting into the game the way I want them. But I'm always telling myself that I'm not a professional UI designer, or any designer actually, so it's okay to leave it like this for now. So, the way that my territory system works is that each territory game object has a collider attached to it. A Unity method on mouse up as button is called when I click on the territory. It instantiates a window to open a new territory. If player decides to do so, the main tile map which is responsible for placement availability, is filled with white tiles, which means that you can now place there. I wanted to add some kind of selection indicator to show the player exactly what the new territory would be. First, I tried making a fence, but it was far too heavy, so I switched to a simple dashed border. I added some nice touches to make the game look better, like selection animation and camera focus. It was really easy to implement because now I have an amazing tool at hand, Lintwin, which helps you with animations. I have already talked about it in the previous episode of this devlog series, and you can watch it here. Also, I implemented a neighbor opening functionality. When you start the game, you cannot open a territory that has no shared sides with your current town. The way it works is that each area has an additional collider, bigger than the game object itself. It overlaps colliders on neighboring territories and stores their game objects in an array. When a territory is open, it notifies all the side territories to be available. And the last thing that I made this week was the terrain of my map. I wanted to make the upper edge look like the horizon and not just end abruptly. At first, I tried a few different options, but they didn't fit well. So I decided to Photoshop one of them mostly changing the colors so they match the grass. This is what I ended up with. This is just a mock-up of the idea that I had about the terrain. 
The only thing that is left is to transfer it to the game. I made this piece of terrain longer and put it behind the grass tile map. Next, I had to make rounded background tiles so they look like hills and not like sharp triangular edges. I put a row of tiles and drew an approximate contour of them. Cut them out and made tiles. Next, I filled the edge. According to my idea, hills had trees in them and some light coming from the other side. So I modified each tile. They were automatically replaced in the game. Another thing that I added was parallax. I left the link to the tutorial I used in the description. It turned out to be quite easy. And this is what the game looks now. You can collect XP from the product you've made. It is now possible to achieve a new level and get reward for this. You can skip the building time. Also, you can open new territories to expand your town further. And now you can scroll to the edge of the land to see the beautiful landscape. This is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel to see future updates on this game. And I promise you, there will be a lot more information and updates, because now I have more time on my hands. See you next week. Bye!